The next step in relaxing consistency requirements is processor consistency. In causal consistency, we need to see all writes by all processors that are causally related in the same order. But if we only require that writes from a particular processor be seen in the same order, that gives processor consistency. So what that means is that writes from, let's say, processor 1 have to be seen in order throughout the system. But writes from processor 2 could be seen before a write from processor 1 or after that write from processor 1, depending upon where that is in the system. So the definition of processor consistency is like this. Writes performed by a single processor are received by all other processors in the order in which they were issued, but writes from different processors may be seen in a different order. Processor consistency would permit this sequence that we saw violated causal consistency. The reason for that is because the two writes are done by different processors, so processor consistency makes no guarantee about how they're seen in the system. Processor 3 happens to see the write by processor 2 before it sees the write by processor 1, and processor 4 happens to see the writes in the opposite order, but that doesn't matter because the two writes are by different processors. Another way of looking at this model is that all writes that are generated by different processors are, are considered to be concurrent. They could happen in whatever order without violating the model. Now one thing that's important to note is that in processor consistency, you have to have cache coherence. If you have all the requirements for processor consistency except cache coherence, then you have what's called PRAM consistency, which is, which, which is short for pipelined RAM consistency, because it uh, deals with sending writes from a particular processor through a pipeline in the same order, and they would be seen in order, but nothing else would necessarily be seen in order. Now that we've got that under our belts, I'd like to ask you what's the strongest consistency model that the following sequences satisfy. First, we have this sequence. Next, we have this sequence. And finally, we have this sequence. Sometimes processor consistency does things that you wouldn't expect. We have here a sequence of actions by P1 and P2. P1 sets A equal to 0 and then later sets A equal to 1. P2 sets B equal to 0 and later sets it to, to 1. Now each of the two processes tests the variable that's set by the other process. And uh, if that variable is 0, it kills the other process. At first glance, it seems that no more than one process should be killed. Let's say P1 executes entirely before P2. P1 then sets A equal to, a equal to 1. And then when it gets to the statement if b equals 0, well, b is still 0, so p2 is going to be killed. And since p2 is killed, then p1 is safe. Now, suppose that the, other, uh, the, other, the opposite thing happens, and p2 executes entirely before p1. Then p2 gets to kill p1, and uh, p1 isn't alive to kill p2. Now suppose both of them execute their assignment statements, and only after that do the checks for whether the variable is equal to 0 take place. In that case, both variables will be equal to 1, so none of the processes will be killed. If you think about it, assuming that A and B are both initialized to 0, there's no other way it could happen. So those are the only possibilities, and none of them lead to more than one process being killed. But with processor consistency, it's possible for both of them to be killed. And that can happen because writes by one processor take a while to get to the other processor. So when each of the processes arrives at the statement that tests a variable for, e for equality to zero, it yet hasn't seen the, se the, the statement that sets that variable to one, and that allows both of the processes to be killed. Now, if we had a global ordering for these, for these shared writes, that couldn't occur because at least one of them, well, actually both of them would have to be set to 1 before both if statements were reached. But with processor consistency, we don't have a global ordering, so it's possible to kill both of the processes. Another way of looking at it is like this. Sequential consistency assures that all memory operations are, are to shared locations are seen in order whether there are loads or stores. So a load, one load needs to precede another load if it's to a shared location. 
uh, and load needs to precede a store and it needs to be seen as preceding the store throughout the system. Ditto for a store preceding a load and a store preceding a store. But processor consistency removes the constraint that a store needs to happen before a load from that location can happen. The reason for that is the store could be in a different processor. And if it's in a different processor, there's no guarantee of where it's going to be seen in the ordering of global memory operations with respect to the load from the local processor. And this has some interesting implications. First of all, we can load values into caches even if there's a store pending to the same location. We don't need to wait for a store from another processor to take place before we can load a value into our cache. Loads don't have to wait for stores from other processors to complete before they can take a value out of a cache. So you can load a value out of the cache regardless of whether another processor store is, is pending. And stores don't have to occur before loads in the same processor can complete. That means that a load that's loading a value that was stored by an earlier write instruction in the same processor can directly obtain the value that was going to be stored even before it's stored because we're only guaranteeing that reads and writes are kept in order from the same processor so you don't need to worry about whether some other processor might have changed that value in the meantime. PC also removes the condition of write atomicity and that's because writes don't have to be seen to complete everywhere in the, in the whole system at the same time Writes from different processors can complete in different orders in different places in the system. And the implications of this are significant. Let's look at a couple of code sequences. The one on the left here has us doing two stores in process one, and then process two is testing the value of the second store, and then when it becomes one, it goes and prints data. So in this case, the only writes that we have are in processor one and writes from the same processor are kept in order by the system. And so in this case, processor consistency produces the same results as sequential consistency. Now if we take the case of the, on the right, we have writes that occur in two different processors. And those writes are not guaranteed to be kept in order. And so it's possible for both of the processes to execute the if statement and then enter the, the then clause because they haven't seen the other process change the value of the variable they're testing to one. How easy is it to work with processor consistency? Most of the time processor consistency is pretty close to what programmers expect. For example, if you do the post wait sequences that we did back when we were considering do across uh, and do pipe, they'll work correctly major operating systems can be ported to systems employing processor consistency without too much trouble. And if you have an error in processor consistent memory, you may have the same error in sequentially consistent memory. You often do, but it's harder to find in processor consistent memory. So that's the next step in relaxing our synchronization constraints. And it's actually the last step we're going to take before we employ two different kinds of operations, operations on synchronization variables and operations on other kinds of variables.